today we want to try and beat every single Pokemon champion, and there's a lot of them, as Cynthia. Cynthia is a powerful champion who ranked highly in the Masters 8, but how would her team face versus the game's champion? Could she defeat them all? If she does manage to, this three powerful trainers she must face to claim victory. With some added rules for more difficulty, let's see if Cynthia can beat every Pokemon champion. Now, unfortunately, Cynthia was introduced in Generation 4 and has a lot of Gen 4 Pokemon. So to take on the first champion, we have to send Cynthia back in time and downgrade her evolved Pokemon, leaving us with only four options. First up is Pokemon Fire Red, and we have the champion for this game, Blue. Our strength versus him is our move coverage, and Milotic being a solid check to most of his team. I believe we can defeat him and move on to our next champion, where we can use our full team. Blue's lead is his Pidgeot, and we lead off with Milotic. The way I'm playing, I can't swap out, so we stay in a nice beam Pidgeot, for an easy one hit knockout to start the challenge. Second is Executor, another Ice Beam and we bring him super low and we snag the freeze. That's great, that means we don't take any damage. Blue 4 restores instantly though, thawing out the free headed eggplant as we bring him back low with another Ice Beam. A final attack and Milotic showing off its importance to the team already. Third is Alakazam, we take a Psychic rather decently thanks to our bulk and a Surf brings Alakazam low. We take another Psychic leaving us at around half HP before a final Surf from Milotic lot it defeats Alakazam. Fourth is Rhydon, but as you can guess, it's an easy knockout again, and it's looking close to a Milotic sweep at this point. Fifth is Arcanine, and it hits an extreme speed, putting us under half, as the Surf takes Arcanine out in one move. This just leaves his last Pokemon and his ace Blastoise. So Water versus Water standoff, and I actually have Recover rather than Aqua Ring at the moment. This means Blastoise can't do any meaningful damage to us, and we can Toxic stall out Blue's four restores, and finish him off with a Surf, beating our first champion champion and allowing us to use our full team for the next. Lance is the champion of Jolto and the next we face. We have our strongest team put together now and honestly I don't see Cynthia losing but Dragonite's a slow but powerful. Let's try it. Lance leads off with Gyarados and we lead off with Spirit Tomb, Cynthia's lead for the champion fights. We take a waterfall for big damage and get flinched. We take another waterfall and flinch again, meaning Gyarados takes down Spirit Tomb thanks to insane RNG. Fantastic. We can send out Togekiss next to our Shockwave, but it's a pretty weak attack. It leaves Gyarados on 1 HP before we take a critical hit Ice Fang. Lance 4 restores as our next Shockwave brings him back down to a sliver. A final electric attack and down goes Gyarados. Lance now sends out Aerodactyl. It outspeeds Togekiss immediately and takes him down with a Thunderfang. My next swap in is Lucario. We take an Aerial Ace for close to half before connecting a Stone Edge for a one-hit knockout. Charizard comes out, but it's four times weak to Rock. We outspeed, connect to Stone Edge, and take it down with no issues. Then is his level 50 Dragonite, his ace Pokemon. It dodges a Stone Edge, connects a critically hit Fire Blast, and down Lucario goes. Now it's time to unleash Cynthia's ace Garchomp. Chomp. A Dragon Claw brings Dragonite to a sliver, activating his berry before he connects an Outrage to instantly kill Garchomp. That was anticlimactic, but we still have a Milotic left. We can finish off his ace with an Ice Beam. His level 49 Dragonite comes out and hits a Dragon Rush for big damage before we take it out with a single Ice Beam too. The last Dragonite Thunder Waves us for some reason. We break through it though and take it out with an Ice Beam in what was a harder Lance fight than usual. It's time to head to Hoenn where a champion awaits us with Mega Evolution 2. In Pokemon Omega Ruby, Steven is a champion. He has mainly rock and steel types, and it should be an easy fight for Cynthia because of type variety, but he does have a Mega Metagross. But we have a Mega Garchomp. Who will come out on top? Let's see. Steven's lead is Skarmory, and we lead off with Spirit Tomb. Turn 1, our Dark Pulse does a fantastic amount of damage as Skarmory sets up a layer of spikes to chip away at our team as they come in. Steven now burns a full restore to heal Skarmory, but it's in vain as a Dark Pulse brings him back down. A final attack from our Ghost, and we take down his first Pokemon. Second, he sends out Agron, and it's got a very low special defense stat. A Dark Pulse again does a massive amount as we dodge a Stone Edge. Spirit Tomb then picks up its second knockout with a Dark Pulse, and it's putting in some fantastic work. Third is Claydol, a bad swap for Steven. We Silverwind, fishing for a boost, doing close to half as he sets up a light screen, raising his team's special defense. We Silverwind again, bringing him lower as he connects an Earth Power that we tank like a monster. A final Silverwind that critical hits, and Spirit Tomb has swept half of Steven's team. But now is our Moldo. A Shadow Ball puts a little dent in him and lowers his special defense as an X is a really hurts us. We Shadow Ball again bringing him lower and lowering his special defense again before a critical hit X is 
Bowser finally takes down our first Pokemon. Now our ace can shine. We send in our Garchomp. Steven Full restores our Moldol, but it's time to Mega Evolve. And I forgot how good Mega Garchomp looks, and its shiny is a lot better than it's normal. A Flamethrower brings our Moldol close to the end. On the turn, he heals, and a final one takes him down. Steven then sends out the Ancient Grass type Cradilly. We Flamethrower again, but it does nothing as a Giga Drain hurts us and heals him. I opt to Dragon Claw this turn for way higher damage as Cradilly confuses us because of course he does. We then break through Confusion to take down Cradilly with a final Dragon Claw. This leaves his last Pokemon and his ace Metagross. We are the stronger Mega here, we only need one attack to take it out, but we are confused. Steven Mega evolves his Metagross and then goes for a Bullet Punch to take Garchomp to below half, before Garchomp snaps out of Confusion and hits an Earthquake to bring him to 1 HP. This seals Steven's fate as a Flamethrower finishes the fight and we beat Steven. We now need to travel back in time for the last time to take on our next champion. Our second champion for Generation 3 is Wallace. He's a water type specialist and for the last time we've had to downgrade our Pokemon. We do have a grass type and a Porygon too, so this should be doable. Let's see how we fare against him. Wallace's lead is a powerful Waylord and we lead off with Roselia. Turn 1 we outspeed and hit a Giga Drain to bring the huge whale to a sliver of HP as he chooses to set up the rain, boosting water type attacks more. Wallace full restores, but we bring him back down with a Giga Drain. The next turn, we finish him off with a last grass type attack. Then is a bulky Milotic second. Our Giga Drain is still doing massive damage and an Ice Beam really hurts our Roselia as a berry heals up Milotic. We then Giga Drain again to bring Milotic to the red as he surfs, which we resist so we survive, meaning Roselia the next turn can take down Milotic and is showing why Cynthia eventually evolved it into a Roserade. Tentacruel comes out and we do a quarter with a Giga Drain before succumbing to a sludge bomb. We send out Togetic, who takes an Ice Beam to nearly half, as a Psychic from us takes Tentacruel low. Wallace full restores, and I just start throwing rocks fishing for a boost. We get poisoned and bring Tentacruel to half before Togetic falls to Tentacruel. We send out Porygon 2 now, and finish off Tentacruel with a Thunderbolt attack. This brings out the annoying Ludicolo. We Ice Beam for a critical hit straight away as he starts setting up Double Team. Wallace full restores, and we connect our two next Ice Beams to bring him to the red as he leech seeds us for recovery, but thankfully we don't miss once and we take down Ludicolo. Now Wallace sends out Whiskash, we spam Ice Beam as Whiskash spams Amnesia, raising his special defense, so we're really doing nothing and we're dying to leech seed. Eventually he earthquakes us and we fall. We have one Pokemon left now, Milotic. I poison Whiskash instantly and just start recover stalling. Wallace heals him and I predict it and retoxic, but I miss, so I now have to keep recover stalling thanks to critical hits on earthquakes and we eventually land a poison on him but it doesn't matter as we end up critically hitting a surf to take him down leaving our last water type against each other Milotic versus Gyarados we toxic Gyarados as he just earthquakes we then recover and he starts dragon dancing an ice beam brings him super low and he opts to go for a hyper beam for massive damage nearly taking us out but a final ice beam takes him down and we finish the fight but literally by the skin of our teeth that was the last battle with our first form so now we can have our full strength team for the rest of the challenge. On to Sinnoh. Cynthia is the champion of the Sinnoh region. Her team is a powerful one, but we're also Cynthia, and our team is powerful too. Cynthia's lead is Spirit Tomb, and we lead off with our own Spirit Tomb. It's a trade-off instantly as our Silver Wind does little, and his Dark Pulse really hurts us. Our Dark Pulse then brings him super low before we go low from a Dark Pulse too, but we are faster, so we win the Spirit Tomb standoff. Second out is Roserade, who instantly takes us out of a Sludge Bomb. I decide to go into Togekiss, who can take on multiple threats of her team. We air slash to put Roserade on a sliver and we take a sludge bomb to half. Cynthia full restores up Roserade, but we bring it back down with an air slash. Then Togekiss finishes her off with one more attack. This brings out Milotic. We air slash and flinch, but we're not doing too much damage. We air slash again and take an ice beam to the face to put us on low HP. Thankfully, we critical hit our next air slash and we take Milotic down. So far, so good. Now comes Garchomp, the monstrous threat. Our air slash does close to half before he takes down Togekiss with a Dragon Rush. Now we send out our own powerhouse in Garchomp and we connect our Dragon Rush to take down Cynthia's ace. Lucario comes out, and it doesn't survive an Earthquake from us and falls too, leaving only Togekiss left. We miss a Dragon Rush, and we take an Air Slash. We connect our Dragon Rush for huge damage, and we take another Air Slash. A final Dragon Rush attack to take down Togekiss, beating Cynthia in Generation 4. It's time to head to Unova, where two champions await us. First up in Gen 5 is Alder, and like Cynthia, he has a wide range of Pokemon with good type variety. Gen 5 is probably going to pack a punch 
punch, I can feel it. Let's see how Cynthia deals with Alder. Alder's lead is a Selgor, and instantly it hits Spirit Tomb for a bug buzz for close to half of his health, as a Shadow Ball brings a Selgor below half two. The following turn, a Selgor hits another bug buzz to put Spirit Tomb on a sliver before we take out a Selgor with a Shadow Ball. Volcarona then comes out and overkills Spirit Tomb with an overheat, reducing his special attack by two stages. Our answer to this is now Milotic. Volcarona starts setting up a Quiver Dance, but our Surf still does over half to him. He then hits a minus one Hyper Beam for practically nothing before Milotic picks up the knockout with Surf. On a Scavalier, our Surf is doing way over half as the Giga Impact does a massive amount of damage to us, but this means Milotic can take it down the following turn with another Surf. This brings out Buffalon, the Buffalo, who we actually outspeed and hit a Surf on for great damage before succumbing to the Buffalo's attacks. We then send out Lucario, who goes for an Aura Sphere to take down the Buffalo. Then comes Druddigon. We don't have much coverage apart from Aura Sphere, and we do close to half again before a superpower just destroys us. We then send out Roserade next, whose Sludge Bomb finishes off Druddigon, leaving only one Pokemon left. Vanillix. We hit a Sludge Bomb and snag the Poison, but Vanillix hits a Blizzard to take down Roserade in just one move, leaving us with two Pokemon left, both weak to ice. But thankfully, Vanillix is a frail Pokemon and an Aura Sphere from Togekiss ends the ice cream, defeating the first champion of the Unova region onto the second. Iris is the second champion of Unova and the majority of her Pokemon are dragons. Haxorus is scary having a Focus Sash and Dragon Dance, but our coverage for it is pretty good. Iris's lead is Hydreigon and we're already at an advantage here with Spirit Tomb having Silver Wind, but a Dragon Pulse does hurt us as our Silver Wind does close to half to him too. We take another Dragon Pulse to the red before bringing him to a sliver as well. Iris full restores, allowing us to continue attacking, but we don't get any stat raises, meaning the next turn we're outsped and took out of a Dragon Pulse. Our next best answer is our own Dragon in Garchomp. We outspeed Hydreigon and swiftly take it down with a Dragon Claw. Iris chooses Lapras next and it's definitely going to take us down, so I go for a Giga Impact for big damage before an Ice Beam just demolishes Garchomp. We swap straight into Lucario next to revenge kill Lapras with a Stab Aura Sphere. Iris's next Pokemon is Druddigon. An Aura Sphere does great damage again, but a Focus Blast just annihilates our HP leaving us in the red. Our next Aura Sphere doesn't roll as high, so Druddigon survives it and takes out Lucario with another Focus Blast. I then send out Rosary to take down Druddigon with a Sludge Bomb. Iris chooses Agron, but we know its special defense is low and an Energy Ball does fantastic damage as he automizes raising his speed. But a slow Pokemon is still a slow Pokemon and Rosary still outspeeds and finishes off Agron. This brings out Archeops and I was fully expecting to be outsped here, but we are faster, but we don't quite take him out. Then we just die to a single Acrobatics, even with Defeatus. Damn, Rosary's pretty frail. Togekiss then can come out and pick up the knockout with an Aura Sphere. This leaves just Haxorus left. We air slash for over half and we take a dual chop for big damage. A final air slash means we take down Haxorus and beat Iris, but both Alder and Iris have inflicted big damage to the team. The difficulty is definitely ramping up. Dianthra is the champion of Kalos and who we take on next. We've got a Mega Garchomp for this fight, but she has a Mega herself in Gardevoir. Let's beat the champion of Kalos. Holucha is her lead and we lead off with Spirit Tomb. Holucha Sword Stances turn one to raise his attack by two stages as our Psychic does a fantastic amount of damage to the Luchador bird. Diantha burns a full restore, healing him as we just Psychic again. Then Holucha hits an Exazer, and even while being at a plus to attack, Spirit Tomb just eats it up and finishes off Holucha with a Psychic. Second, Diantha sends out Tyrantrum. We are faster than the slow T-Rex, and the Shadow Ball does over half as he head smashes, connecting and taking us to 7 HP before putting himself low from recoil. This means Spirit Tomb picks up a second knockout the next turn with a Shadow Ball. Third Diantha sends out Aurora, the Ice Dino. Once again, Spirit Tomb's faster, but a Shadow Ball does no way near as much as it did previously, and we die to a Blizzard. Our best answer to this thing is Lucario. A four times effective Aura Sphere obliterates the Ice Dinosaur for an easy knockout. Diantha now sends out Gudra, and I misplay by going for Aura Sphere again. That doesn't do too much to it, and we take a Focus Blast, nearly taking us out. I Aura Sphered again before dodging a Focus Blast. Now it dawned on me to go for a physical move, Stone edge and with that we critical hit and take down Gudra. Fifth is Galgeist. Lucario's Shadow Ball brings Galgeist to a sliver of HP as she Phantom Forces. We can't attack now thanks to her being vanished and a Phantom Force takes us out, giving Galgeist a kill over us for once. But now we send out Garchomp. Diantha full restores up Galgeist.
Galgeist and then we Mega Evolve. Our Flamethrower brings Galgeist to Justice Liver again. Diane for full restores yet again. I don't know how many she has before we can finally take her out with a couple more Flamethrowers. This just leaves Gardevoir left. Hushi Mega Evolves into Mega Gardevoir and it's Fairy type and powerful but it's frail. And Garchomp is still quicker thanks to the stats not kicking in straight away. I go for a Giga Impact to overkill Gardevoir and make sure we defeat Diamphor. It's time to head to Alola next. How is the person we fight to become champion here in Alola and he's always one of the most trickiest. His team really does pack a punch, but so do we. I'm not sure how well we can deal with his threats, but it all depends on who Incineroar Z moves. How's lead is an Alolan Raichu and we have a decent matchup with Spirit Tomb. While a Thunderbolt definitely hurts us, we can take it low in one super effective dart pulse. How full restores, but you know the drill, we bring him back down with another move. We take yet another thunderbolt close to the red before taking out his threat with a dart pulse. Second how sends out Incineroar. We have no moves for this thing, but it decides to go for his Z move anyway. Incineroar's Z move is Inferno Overdrive and by dropping a nuke on our heads he takes us out. I mean I'm at 42 HP anyway so I'll take that. With his Z move burnt we go straight into Garchomp. We hit an earthquake and we're far too powerful for How's Ace and we take it out in one move. But then he sends out the Ice Crab Carbominable, who eats our Flamethrower and hits an Ice Hammer to annihilate Garchomp with a critical hit. Yikes. We then send out Togekiss and go for a super effective Air Slash, and thanks to Garchomp's chip damage, it's enough to make it fall. Fourth is a Mighty Tauros, who's fast and hits hard. A Stab Double Edge does over half to us, as an Aura Sphere from Togekiss critical hits taking it out and dealing with this monstrous threat. How now sends out the Dragon type Noivern. We don't have a Fairy move, and we get hit by an Air Slash. We Air Slash in return for over half, and then we take another Air Slash to take down our Togekiss. I now go into Lucario, and I opt to go for a Stone Edge, and we take an Air Slash first, flinching us, activating our ability, raising our speed. We're still slower, and he Air Slashes again, flinching us, again, raising our speed by two stages. Now we finally outspeed, and take down Noivern with a Stone Edge. His last Pokemon is Leafeon. I extreme speed, as I know it has Quick Attack. We do nothing to it, though, and he takes us out of a Leaf Blade. We only have two Pokemon left, and thankfully one's Roserade. Leafeon Baby Doll's Eyes reducing our attack stat, but a sludge bomb to the face takes him down. How took us really close to losing then? If Roserade fell, we could have lost, but it's time for the switch games. So for Trace, we don't have a full team. In fact, we only have one possible option. So I'm going back to the old style for this video in showing him no respect and sweeping him with a base Porygon. The battle starts off by Trace mega evolving his Pidgeot into Mega Pidgeot. We lead off with Porygon. Thanks to AVs in this game and being able to maximize all of your stats, your Pokemon become gods. So our Porygon destroys his Mega with one Thunderbolt. Vileplume, his second Pokemon, falls to one single Ice Beam. Marowak is his third choice, and he falls to a single Ice Beam too. Fourth is Rapidash, who falls to a single Stab Tri-Attack. But then is Jolteon, and honestly, I'll save you the trouble. He lives a Tri-Attack, but does no damage with a Thunder. But Trace has so many full restores in his inventory, it takes a while of exchanging moves and items. But eventually, we manage to take Jolteon down. This just leaves Slowbro left. One Electrifying Thunder ball and he goes down giving us a nostalgic win over Trace like the good old days. But back to business now. The champion for Sword and Shield is Leon. His team is really strong but so is ours and we get to use Dynamax but not on Garchomp this fight on someone else. Leon's lead is his Aegislash and we have a solid answer in Spirit Tomb. A Dark Pulse hurts him but he's in his stance form so he doesn't take too much. He then replies with a Shadow Ball and lowers our special defense which I'm starting to think is a 100% chance from his Aegislash. However, now he's not in his defensive stance. Leon heals him up, but it's in vain, and the Dark Pulse takes him out. Leon sends out Haxorus to Dragon next. Haxorus goes for an Outrage, and yet, yeah, we're not living that, and down we go. I decide to unleash Garchomp now. We are faster, and the Dragon Claw just does too much damage, and Haxorus can't stand to our might. Then is Mr. Rhyme, the Dancing Mr. Mime. I go for a Flamethrower, but our special attack stat is just so poor, and it doesn't even do much. Mr. Rhyme hits the Freeze Dry, and that just obliterates Garchomp. I decide to go into Lucario, next as we're two Pokemon down already. Being part Ice type means the Stone Edge will finish the job and Mr. Rhyme stops dancing and falls. Leon chooses Dragapult next. It's super quick and outspeeds Lucario with a 
fiery flamethrower to bring us really low, as we hit a shadow ball not doing enough to take down the ghost and dragon type. The next turn, Dragapult takes down Lucario with a final flamethrower. I now go into Milotic, who hasn't seen too much action lately, and a Thunderbolt does a quarter to us as we're bulky and we retaliate with a freezing ice beam to pick up the knockout. Leon's next Pokemon is Inteleon, and honestly, this Pokemon was a pain. So its first move is Dark Pulse, and I go for a Miracle, doing nearly half back to him. But he has a move called Tearful Luck, which reduces attack and special attack by one stage. So it literally became a fight of me trying to hit Miracles because our Surf would be so weak after the drops, it does nothing. This went on for quite a while, but eventually Inteleon starts to Dark Pulse again. But we get flinched, he Dark Pulses us again, and we flinch, he Dark Pulses us once more, and we flinch, three flinches in a row. Because of that, Milotic's fate is sealed and he goes down. This isn't good, we only have two Pokemon left. Luckily, one of them is our ace up the sleeve, Togekiss. We can Dynamax Togekiss like Cynthia did, and this powers up our moves, so Shockwave is now Max Lightning. We take Inteleon out and settle the Electric Terrain, which is great for his last Pokemon, Charizard. Leon Gigantamax is, and we hit a Max Lightning for great damage, as Leon then hits a Max Rockfall for also great damage, and sets up Standstorm, so we both take chip damage too. We Max Lightning once more, bringing him to the red as he hits a Max Rockfall to put us super low too. Our Dynamax now ends, but we are faster. Charizard is way too low to recover, and Togekiss takes him down with a final shockwave, beating Leon and leaving one champion left. The last champion is Gita for Generation 9 in Scarlet and Violet. She's got some really unique Pokemon. Unfortunately, we had to say goodbye to two of ours in Roserade and Togekiss as they're not in these games. But don't fret, we've got two amazingly powerful Pokemon in Porygon Z and Kamoho. Her lead is Esparfa and we lead off with Spirit Tomb. It's a great matchup for us again as Esparfa hits a dazzling gleam for a small amount of damage before we retaliate with a Shadow Ball that just obliterates the Psychic Ostrich. Next up is Golgo. He decides to bulk up, raising his attack and defense as we just shadow ball again, as there's not much else we can really do. He then luckily misses the play rough, which means we can get a little bit more damage off on him. Then he connects a play rough, and at plus one, there's no chance we survive. I decide to go into Garchomp, not thinking what will come out after. We flamethrower to take down the goal. Then Gita sends out the loser, who tanks a Dragon Claw and hits an Ice Fang, bringing us lower, and I'm surprised we tanked it as well as we did. A final Dragon Claw, and we take down the fish. But this brings out Avalug, the big Ice Slab. It has amazing defense, but not great special, and it doesn't help that I misclick Dragon Claw that does nothing before we take an Avalanche to the face to instantly take us out. But now welcome our new team member, Kamoho, who has Aura Sphere, and that's enough to melt the Ice Slab. Next is King Gambit, who's got Strength for the Fallen, but it doesn't matter, an Aura Sphere from our Dragon Fighting type is too strong, and the Dark and Steel type falls. This leaves Gita's last Pokemon, Glamora. She terrestrializes into a pure rock type, lives an Aura Sphere, and hits a 4 times super effective Dazzling Gleam to one hit knock out our dragon. I decide to send out Lucario for a final attack on Glamora. We connect our Aura Sphere, taking down Glamora, defeating Gita, and every single Pokemon champion as Cynthia. Or have we? Atop of the snowy Mount Silver is a legendary trainer Red and a champion trainer himself. He leads with Pikachu and we lead off with Spirit Tomb. We get smashed by a Volt Tackle straight away for massive damage as we barely hang on, but we take out Pikachu after recoil with a Shadow Ball damage. Second Red sends Venusaur, who immediately takes us out with a Giga Drain. We then send out Togekiss and Air Slash him for massive damage as a Sludge Bomb hurts us and poisons us. Red Full restores, but we take Venusaur all the way back down with another attack. We then get to finish off Venusaur with an Air Slash, but Togekiss is living on the edge right now. Lapras is Red's next Pokemon, and an Aura Sphere puts a massive dent in him before we succumb to the Transport Pokemon. This allows us to go into Roserade and finish off Lapras with an Energy Ball. Red sends out Charizard, who takes a bit of damage from an Extra Sensory before going for a Fiery Flare Blitz that destroys Roserade in one move, but he takes hefty recoil damage too. We can then send out Lucario, who has Extreme Speed, which is a priority move, allowing us to take Charizard are down. Next up is Blastoise, and Aura Sphere does fantastic damage as we dodge a Focus Blast. We Aura Sphere again, putting Blastoise on a sliver as a Focus Blast connects, putting us both on a sliver. Red now cheats and heals up Blastoise as we bring him back to half before we die to the hail damage. However, Garchomp can finally join the battle and take him down with an Earthquake. Red's last Pokemon is Snorlax that has Blizzard. We are down to our final two Pokemon. Garchomp Earthquake does massive damage to the high HP Pokemon, before 
or a blizzard puts us on the edge. A final earthquake though from Garchomp and we scrape by Red and then he disappears into the void. Team Plasma's N and a champion himself who also has a legendary. We need to win to continue. N leads with Reshiram and we lead off with Spirit Tomb. It's not a great start as a fusion flare does massive damage to our ghost type as a shadow ball tickles a legendary. A final fusion flare and Spirit Tomb falls. We can now send out Garchomp who's faster than Reshiram and connects a Dragon Rush to take down N's legendary Pokemon. N then sends out Vanillix. Our weak special attack comes into play here as our flamethrower doesn't do too much but we dodge a blizzard. We flamethrower again, but Vanillix connects his blizzard, taking down Garchomp. We send out Lucario and M4 restores, but an Aurisphere is doing fantastic damage, and it's not long before the ice cream falls. Clink Clank, while well, Zoroark, dies to a single Aurisphere 2. Then the actual Clink Clank, who can't take an Aurisphere either, comes out and falls over. N sends out Caracosta, who survives an Aurisphere thanks to Sturdy and hits a waterfall for half. Before the next turn, Lucario can take him out. Out. Finally, Archeops. I think we may be slower, but we're actually faster. We'd land a Stone Edge and the prehistoric bird can't withstand Lucario's might and Lucario destroys N, leaving one last champion to face. Kieran's latest champion to be introduced and he's one of the hardest. This has a focus on double battles. Can we beat every champion as Cynthia? Let's find out. All right. Kieran was insanely hard to do. Our first attempt went horribly. We didn't even make it to his last Pokemon before Garchomp is solo versus a fairy type and Incineroar with reduced attack. Maybe I played it bad, we'll try again. Five attempts later and it's still not happening. This time I did make it to the end Pokemon Hydrapple, but it's fickle being just one shots my Pokemon and making it to his last with more than two Pokemon alive is just insanely hard as it is due to his coverage for Dragon types. This attempt was close though, even a stab adapted Hyper Beam didn't take down Hydrapple from Porygon Z and we just fall to a Terror Blast. Attempt 14, would this be the one? We lead off with Spirit Tomb and Milotic as he leads off with Politoed and Dragonite with an emphasis on a rain setup. Milotic is the fastest Pokemon on the field weirdly enough and an Ice Beam does close to half on Dragonite before Dragonite nails Milotic with a Thunder for massive damage and Politoed smashes Spirit Tomb with a Weather Ball. We retaliate with a weak Dark Pulse on Politoed. The following turn Milotic picks up the first knockout of the fight with an Ice Beam on Dragonite and a Weather Ball takes Spirit Tomb out putting us at a 1 for 1. We send out Lucario and Kieran chooses Porygon Z. Politoed's helping hands boosting his life orb adaptability hyper beam into Lucario and that is just one dead Pokemon. Milotic can retaliate with a rain boosted surf dealing good damage to both of his Pokemon. The next turn we send out our own Porygon Z next. Politoed goes for a helping hand again but Porygon Z's recharging so they waste a turn. We Thunderbolt into Politoed and the Wakanberry means he survives it with a sliver as Milotic's ice beam finishes off Porygon Z. Kieran now sends out Incineroar whose Intimidate doesn't bother my Pokemon. We miss a Hyper Beam on Incineroar and Milotic Surf deals incredible damage thanks to the rain, taking out Politoed and leaving Incineroar on a sliver left. This activates his Berry though, healing him as a Darkest Lariat into Milotic finishes him off after he's done massive damage to Kieran's team. It's a 3 on 3 left now and it's looking the same as always. Porygon Z lands a Hyper Beam on Grimmsnarl, bringing him to his Focus Sash as Komodo's Earthquake kills every single Pokemon on the field as they're all low, turning the tides in our favour. This means we can swap into Garchomp and Kieran only has Hydrapple left, but it's powerful. It's fickle beam can just one shot our dragons, especially if it goes all out, meaning we possibly only have two attacks to win. Kieran terrestrializes into a pure fighting type and Garchomp's Dragon Claw and Komodo's put him at just under half as he goes for a fickle beam, but he doesn't go all out. So Komodo survives on 7 HP. This means both our dragons can finish off Hydrapple the next turn with a Dragon Claw from them both. That was was close. Garchomp's Dragon Claw didn't even kill. If Komodo died, there's a chance Garchomp would have just died, but I'll definitely take that. With that, we beat Kieran and every single Pokemon champion as Cynthia. So, no death count this run, rather than attempts, and with all of them coming at Kieran at the end. Although, Alder, Iris, and Red really did put a dent in the team. It was to be expected, it being a bit e of an easier run due to the power of Cynthia's Pokemon, but it was still super fun to do nonetheless. What do you guys think? Would you want me to keep the attempt format, but no deaths in the future or go back to the old style let me know your feedback like and subscribe if you haven't already and as always i appreciate you watching and i'll see you in the next one